untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we are revisiting our unpredictable cyclone deck, which is a pretty crazy brew involving four copies of unpredictable cyclone from Ikoria. It's a five mana enchantment, saying if a cycling ability of another non-land card would cause you to draw a card, instead exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a card that shares a card type with the cycled card, and we can cast that card without paying its mana cost, and we can also cycle our enchantment for two mana. So not the easiest card to wrap your head around, but it becomes pretty clear once we illustrate it with an example. So let's say we have Cyclone in play and cycle Boon of the Wishgiver, which happens to be a sorcery, can cycle it for one mana, then we're gonna have to reveal cards of the top of our library until we hit another sorcery, which could be another copy of Boon of the Wishgiver, in which case we get to draw four cards for one mana, which isn't a bad deal, or we could hit one of our other sorceries, which are gonna be either Inspired Ultimatum, which says target player gains five, Inspired Ultimatum deals five damage to any target, and then you draw five cards, which is also a pretty good deal, or we could hit our sweeper, Ruinous Ultimatum, destroying all non-land permanents your opponents control. So those are all the scenarios if we cycle Boon of the Wishgiver, can do the same if we cycle a creature, and Yidaro Wandering Monster happens to be the only creature in the deck, so if we cycle it for two mana we're guaranteed to hit another Yidaro, which is going to give us access to an 8-8 Trample Haste, so that's a pretty good deal as well. And then we could do the same with enchantments, so if we cycle Cyclone while we have another Cyclone in play, then we have two options, we could either hit another Cyclone, which isn't very helpful, or we could hit Shark Typhoon, which is pretty exciting, giving us access to the 6-man enchantment, saying whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying, where X is that spell's converted mana cost, and can also cycle the Typhoon itself for X1 and a blue, so it can potentially make a smaller shark token earlier in the game, and even in the late game we can still cycle Shark Typhoon, get a big shark token, and potentially hit another copy of Shark Typhoon with the Cyclone's ability. Then for artifacts, we have 8 crystals in the deck that all have cycling too, so those this will help us ramp into a turn 4 Cyclone, but once we have Cyclone in play it's usually still beneficial to cycle these, since we'll put a Cycling card in the graveyard which will power up Zenith Flare, but we also get to hit a crystal for essentially just 2 mana, and then a crystal can tap for mana right away, so we end up saving 1 mana on the exchange. And then we can do the same for instance, we have 8 instants in the deck, 4 copies of Easy Prey, which is a nice cheap removal spell, which we can cast early on, but can also cycle it later in the game for 2 mana, and then we're either gonna hit another copy of Easy Prey, or a copy of Zenith Flare, which can be a lot more exciting in the late game, dealing X damage to any target, and we gain X life, where X is the number of cards with a cycling ability in our graveyard, and over half of our deck includes cycling cards, since we also have 8 cycling lands in the mana base, and this is also a great card to punish the various mill decks, which happen to put a lot of cycling cards in our graveyard for free, so then a Zenith Flare can potentially steal a game out of nowhere. So this is the basic gist of our deck, of course the deck is a little janky, and if the opponent has a counter spell for Cyclone, our game plan starts to fall apart, but we can potentially still get there just by ramping with our crystals, and start hard casting our Runus Ultimatum, Inspired Ultimatum, and maybe a big Shark Typhoon. Now when going over the mana base we have 8 Triomes, which are very important for mana fixing, can also cycle them later in the game, so these are great lands to have access to, and then the rest of the mana base doesn't include any basic lands, instead we have 16 pathways, so we've got a red-white one, blue-red, blue-black and black-white. Now deciding which side of these lands to play is one of the main difficulties when playing this deck, since of course we have cards like Runus Ultimatum and Inspired Ultimatum that have pretty specific color requirements. Now one piece of advice I would like to give is to consider the deck as just being a Mardu deck, and try to play these pathways as the red side and these ones as the black side as much as possible, because you want to be able to cast your Runus Ultimatum to potentially catch you back up, and you do often end up hard casting Runus Ultimatum thanks to our various crystals ramping into it, so just being able to cast Runus Ultimatum to save you when you're behind is very important, and then at some point you'll maybe get blue mana thanks to Rogarin Triome and Rogarin Crystal, so at some point you'll be able to hard cast your Inspired Ultimatum and cycle your Shark Typhoon, but for the most part consider the deck as just being Mardu for a Runus Ultimatum. And before I forget we also get to play with Kahira, the Orphan Guard, as our companion, since the only creature in the deck happens to be a dinosaur, although we're not going to end up casting Kahira all that often. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, don't hate this, we've got a few early cyclers, a bit of ramp, 
missing cyclone, but hopefully we can cycle into it. Play our red source out so we can cycle Yidaro here. Facing red white, turn to birth. Now we'll have to decide whether to play this as a blue source or a black source. I guess we can postpone that decision unless I want double blue. Also, then we might not be able to cast the author ultimatum. But given that all my cards in hand are blue, I think I'm down to play this as a blue source. And then I'm not sure yet if I want to cycle Boon. Might be better to hold it, hard cast Shark Typhoon, and then just start hard casting six and seven drops. Depends how aggressive my opponent is here. But they appear to be quite controlling. Easy prey I can cycle. Could also put Kahira in hand, although I think cycling is probably better here. If my opponent goes for a Transmogrify, I can also in response easy prey the wall. Alright. No Harmonious Archon for you. And a Shark Typhoon for me. Let's see if they have a Banishing Light. Elspeth conquers death, even better. Didn't want to see that one. So I can ultimate him now. Or I can hard cast another Shark Typhoon. Next turn the Elspeth tax means I won't be able to cast Ultimatum. I will be able to play Boon if I draw another land. I think I'm still hard casting Typhoon here. I can't resist. And if nothing else we can play Kahira. And that's why you shouldn't hard cast Shark Typhoon. At least no value from the Conqueror's death. Now, have I learned my lesson? Maybe not. Casket for Kahira, that's fine. So still enough mana to make a token end of turn with castle. Ooh, Cyclone. Alright, I guess we'll play Cyclone and then I can cycle Boon at instant speed. And then if we hit the author ultimatum I get my Shark Typhoon back. So there's a token. Let's see if they have another transmogrify effect. It's gonna be Luca. Yep. And then in response to the minus, I should probably cycle in case we hit another inspired ultimatum.
All right, I'll take a ruinous one. Welcome back, Shark Typhoon. I missed you. Now the question is whether we play second Shark Typhoon or if we cast Ultimatum first. I think we all know the answer. Could also cycle Typhoon. I guess I could cycle Cyclone. We're pretty likely to hit another Shark Typhoon. All right, let's do that. Cycle this. All right, hit a Cyclone, still makes a 5-5. Five five. And then I guess we'll cycle this one end of turn, making a 3-3 shark and hopefully hitting another Typhoon. Ah, opponent has seen enough already. We still have so many more sharks to make. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with what looks like a decent hand. Ideally, I keep Boon of the Wishgiver in hand to cycle after we play Cyclone. And then for now, probably play this as a red source. I do need to hit a third land drop, and ideally a fourth one as well. So I can play Crystal on three, and then Cyclone on four. Turn one Knight. So we might be under quite a bit of pressure. All right, I'll play a Triumph here. And then I still have the option next turn to play Crystal and Cycle Boon if I don't draw land. So red, white, knights. Could also easy prey the worthy knights. Zenith flare the draw. I think I should keep ramping. And then hang on to my boon. Next turn I can always go crystal and then cast easy prey. Alright, veteran. Definitely a must-answer card. And red cap. Serpent with a very aggressive start. Although we might still be able to survive if we get a Runus ultimatum going. Alright, so I can play Cyclone, although I can't cycle just yet. So I think the play might still be Crystal, cast Easy Prey, and then next turn we can play Cyclone and Cycle Boon. And hopefully hit something good. So let's do that. Probably still playing this as a non-blue source in case we need to hard cast Runus Ultimatum at some point. And then I guess I'll pass. Small chance my opponent has the indestructible trick which could punish me for not killing the veteran right away. Nah, they're gonna pump the weasel back. So we're at one. So we'll need some luck here. Do this now in case we hit another boon. But we hit a runus ultimatum, alright. Now my opponent's probably got some haste creatures. So if I waited to cycle an opponent's turn, I could have cast Runus Ultimatum basically at instant speed. But yeah, there's a Fervent Champion. But if Boon hits another Boon, then we could have potentially still played a land for the turn and cycle the second Boon to then hit a Sweeper. But uh, yeah, sadly Fervent Champion can finish us off. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a potential turn three crystal, turn four cyclone with a boon to cycle. So this could work out nicely. And then what land to play turn one? Probably gonna need a red source. So we'll start there. And then I definitely wanna hang on to boon for as long as possible. Opponent on a blue white version of Yorion. So hopefully they don't have too much interaction. And then probably play this as a white source. Yeah, 
Don't think there's a need to cycle Shark Typhoon just yet. And then... Maybe Black Source plus Crystal. And we'll see if they have a Skyclave Apparition. Not yet. Alright, so we're relatively safe to play Cyclone. They can't Apparition it and they can't conquer death next turn. So unless they've got Banishing Lights, we should be okay. And a backup Cyclone just in case. Alright, now we can probably play this as a blue source. So we have double blue in case we want to hard cast some of these spells. And we've got a good shot at hitting Shark Typhoon or, I mean, Backup Cyclone could also be good if they have a Conqueror's Death. Opponent just puts Yorion in hand. Alright, so... What's the play? Can Cycle Crystal, which will get me another Crystal. And then I can Cycle Typhoon for zero. Cycle Cyclone. I guess we want to start by cycling one of our enchantments. I guess I can do this all in the opponent's turn too. Don't want to cycle Boon because hitting Runus Ultimatum wouldn't do much at the moment. So we're interested in getting more enchantments in play. And we'll see if they have a Conqueror's Death here. Yep. That was to be expected, so... We'll let the target Cyclone and in response... I think I start by cycling Typhoon for zero, because I might want to hard cast Cyclone if I don't hit another one. So start here. Right, we hit a Shark Typhoon, that's still decent. Let's cycle this, or I guess I can cycle Crystal first now. Make a 3-3 three, three shark. And then cycle cyclone. If we had another shark typhoon, great. We've got double shark typhoon. If not, we'll have a backup cyclone. Alright. Double shark typhoon it is. And then I can just hard cast boon. Make two more sharks. Doesn't seem all that bad. Of course, my opponent can have a sweeper next turn, but we'll get to draw some cards in the meantime. What if I just Zenith Flare it in some speed? Maybe that's better. Yeah, that's probably better, actually. I'll have to pay the Conqueror's Death Tax, but we can still manage. And then probably one double black, since we already have triple white. So if they wipe the board, could also cycle Boon, hit them for four, make two four four sharks, which would be lethal. Instead, just cast Yurion. Yep. So that's gonna flicker the Conqueror's death. And then, do we have guaranteed lethal if I cycle Zenith Flare for four? Um, make two sharks, they have to jump this one. Yeah, they're still dead here. So, I guess we'll do this now. Can't cycle the crystal because of the Conqueror's Death Tax. And my opponent explodes. Sweet. So, yeah. Getting that double Typhoon right away was pretty nice, but even if we didn't, we would have hit another Cyclone, and then we could have cycled Boon to potentially hit some more Ultimatums. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this looks like a hand that's just gonna hard cast Inspired Ultimatum. Although, let's see if that's even possible. Yeah, we've got triple reds, double blue. These will be whites. Alright, I'm down. We'll see if it ends up being too slow. Hmm. 
Ooh, Cyclone. Well, that makes things a little bit more exciting, too. Uh, now what? I think we still stick to the try and hard cast ultimatum plan in case Cyclone doesn't work out. Could also cycle one of the crystals to try and hit my land drop naturally. Might be better. Opponent on Gruul. Ooh, Boon. Boon plus Cyclone is a combo. Top decking ultimatum, not so much. So, don't have double red just yet. I guess I want to play this so I have black mana in case of an easy prey. So it might be turn 5, Cyclone, and maybe Cycle in the same turn. Hopefully we don't take too much damage in the meantime. Alright, Mammoth. So yeah, if they save their Fabled Passage for next turn, we're staring down 10 damage. Typhoon. think we just... Play Crystal. Could Typhoon Cycle make a 2 2 Shark? Hope to hit my land. And then I get to Chump, potentially. Now let's just play Crystal. And then I kind of have to hang on to Boon since otherwise I don't have anything powerful to do after I play Cyclone. Might cycle Typhoon for zero, so I'm more likely to. Play Cyclone and Cycle Boon afterwards. Alright, luckily no Fabled Passage, so we're not dead. Still taking 11. Alright, we found a land. That's good. So now... Play Cyclone and we're pretty much all in on hitting Ultimatum as opposed to another Boon since we've already played land for the turn. So might as well wait in case of another haste creature. We've got three Boons in the deck for Runus Ultimatum, so we're a slight favorite to hit the Sweeper. Great Henge. Yep. I mean, that's going to die to Ultimatum, too. Alright, come on. Alright, we're still in the game. Opponent processing what's going on here. Doesn't forget to gain the two life. Can't quite cast my Inspired Ultimatum yet, but probably just going to play Kahira to have a blocker. And then next turn I should be able to cast this. Alright. Well, that's a pretty rude shield breaker destroying my crystal. Luckily, they didn't kill my blue crystal, so I can still maybe ultimate him here. I'll chump. Alright, so we've got double blue. Although, I guess I don't have triple red. Hmm, so there's no way for me to play ultimate him with pathway here. That's unfortunate. Yeah, we've got. Triple red, but then no double blue, or double blue, but then no triple red. Alright, so I'll just have to play Triome tapped, and then hope for next turn. Although pretty likely to be dead here. I guess they don't have double red, so they might be stuck with Ember Cleave in hand. Nope. Just a stomp. Well, Ember Shieldbreaker, definitely unexpected in the main deck here in Bus of One. Definitely got us pretty good. On to the next one. 
Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck, so if this is a mill deck, having a Zenith Flare in our hands is quite valuable. And yeah, turn 3 Crystal, maybe turn 4 Cyclones, definitely where we want to be. Turn 1 Ruin Crab, so... Ooh. Even have the boon to go with Cyclones, so... Yeah, just gotta hope they don't count for my Cyclone. And if they do, hopefully Zenith Flare can finish them off. Opponent's gonna mill me for... 12 here on turn 2. So we'll have to take a look at uh, Zenith Flare here to see how much damage it'll deal. Already up to 9. Can cycle a Yidaro. And then... Which color do we choose? I will need double red eventually. I guess this as a white source is fine for now. Does my opponent know about Zenith Flare yet? They don't. Zenith Flare up to 13 damage. So we'll somehow need to bait out any counter spells they might have. Do they know about Zenith Flare now? Still no. Second Zenith Flare. Alright, that's exciting. Play Crystal. They might counter this. Just a Thought Thief. Alright, so we're not close to getting milled. And uh, Zenith Flare is looking pretty strong here. A third Rune Crab. Let's see if we can one-hit KO our opponents. 23 cards remain. They must have seen the Zenith Flare by now. Yep, there it is. So the jig is up. All right, the third Zenith Flare. Well, I guess we'll just pass a turn and then end of turn Zenith Flare, untap Zenith Flare again. Another Thought Thief. Sadly, this Zenith Flare isn't quite lethal. So we'll have to let them untap, mill me, and hope they uh, don't get there. But given that they only have one card in hand, we should be fine here. Wind Robber, in response, Zenith Flare you for 21. And yeah, that's why Zenith Flare is in the deck. It might not be all that impressive in other matchups, but after facing the Rogues deck a few too many times, you'll be happy to have it. So overall, our deck's definitely one of the jankier decks we've featured recently, so I don't recommend it as a competitive choice, so don't go spending your wildcards on it, but it's definitely a ton of fun when it all finally comes together. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.